Hello, and welcome to Chef Tip Tuesday with Chef Veronica. We'll be getting started in about one minute. I want to thank you all for joining us on Tuesdays. I know you could be doing some other things like having your lunch, but I thank you for taking time out to join us on this journey. I know y'all can see my steamer in the back, right? <laughs> we roll around with the steamer. <laughs> oh, goodness, yeah. You have to make sure you keep those linens steamed and pressed for presentation. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, as you all can see, I had to take the show on the road again. I'm out in my car, had to go take a look at a venue celebrating me, no one else. I was told yesterday that um, I need to start showing myself the same love that I show my clients. So um, we're hey, Jerome. Welcome to the Chef Tip Tuesday. So, yes, we're um, going to do just that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started because I don't want to keep you long. But um, as I said, you can see my steamer in the back. So let's talk about a steamer for a minute. I, I want to talk to you about making sure that you always have the proper presentation when you're doing events out here. So for the record, um, that's one of the things that we are known for. We are known for not having wrinkles in our linens. Um, that's one of the things that I'm big on. I have two professional steamers, and I call them professional steamers because they will knock the wrinkles out of anything. And that happens to be um, Tierra and Jerome. You have to know, when you have a team of people, you have to know what they enjoy doing and what they don't enjoy doing. Now, just because you don't enjoy doing a thing, it doesn't mean that you won't do it. All that means is it's not your favorite thing to do. But if you have to do it, you will execute that item yourself, whatever it may be. Hey, Tony, welcome to the Chef Tip Tuesday. So um, about that steamer. So I had an event, a couple of events on Saturday. And the steamer is still in my car from Saturday, yes. I'm sorry, it's in the car. But um, we didn't even actually need the steamer, but I always have the steamer on hand because you just never know. Even though I prep my linens before I take them out to install, do an install at events, I still take my steamer just in case because from it hanging, being hanging on the hanger, you can have a crease in there, and I don't want to see any creases. So um, that's why I keep a smaller steamer in my car as well with an extension cord. Now, here's the thing. If you are, let's say you hire us to, and you just want to rent the linens, you don't want to um, pay us to come in and install. Because if we come in to install the linens, linens there is going to be an additional charge for that. Because it's no different from you renting from a rental place. When you rent from a rental place, you rent the items, they drop them off, or you pick them up and then you do the install yourself now your linens are going to be prepped before they come out of house out of our house to go to your event or the facility they are going to be prepped but i can't tell you that they're not going to have a crease in them from being on the hanger so that's the difference from you doing it or having the specialist which is us to come in and do it for you so um if you are an event planner, if you are a decorator, if you're having an event, don't think that people don't pay attention to wrinkles because they do. Even though they may not say anything about it, you get a cleaner, crisp look when the linens are pressed. So um, just a little tip that I can give any decorator, anyone in your home, even if you're hanging curtains in your home and you know how you take them out of the pack, and they have the creases in them, and you really don't want to iron them, you can throw them in your dryer on high for about five minutes, and that will knock the wrinkle out. Now, the other thing that you can do, if you um, purchase some linens and um, the fabric, what I do, I relax the fabric by washing them, and I put downy 
in the fat in the water so it can relax the fibers in the um the tablecloth so when i throw it in the dryer it's going to come out it's going to knock those wrinkles out and then we only need to tap it with the steamer the other thing i want to talk to you about i want to talk to some chefs now you know how you're in the kitchen and you're cooking or you can even be at home cooking and you have on an apron you know the apron is in place to guard your clothes from getting food on your clothes and also as being um, clean so you're not, you don't just have your clothes exposed to the food because, you know, we do all types of stuff with our shirts on and things like that. You may comb your hair, which means hair can get on your shirt and things. And then if you're cooking, it can end up in your food. So if you are a cooker, if you are a chef, if you are a caterer, Keep your extra jacket on hand because if you're wearing the jacket and food splash up on the jacket, it's going to show when you walk out of that kitchen. Now, some people may say, well, that's the purpose of it. You wear the chef jacket, people going to know the chef jacket gets dirty. It's one thing for the chef jacket to get a couple of splashes on it. It's a whole other thing for the chef jacket to have a whole bunch of splashes on it. And all I'm talking about today is presentation, always representing yourself, always representing your company. It, it doesn't take, it, it may take an extra step to take an extra jacket with you so you can put on a clean jacket when you go out amongst the crowd. Take that extra step so you don't have to worry about giving people anything to talk about. Not that they're talking about it, but who knows? You never want to give the ammo. So, and you always want to think presentation, because presentation is everything. So, um, my tip for today, those are tips, but here's the tip for today. If you're making a sandwich, so you have two pieces of bread, you're going to um, put some mayonnaise on the bread, maybe you're going to put some horseradish, maybe some mustard, I don't know what you're putting on there. It just des depends on what you want on the bread. But let me go back before I even go there. Remember when you were growing up? and your mom or your dad would fix some toast, and they would take the butter knife and take the butter and spread the butter on the bread? Why did the butter never go to the, from one end of the bread to the other end? All you see is in the middle, this butter, where they spread the butter in the middle of the bread. We still ate it, and it was good to us. But what I have learned over the years, the butter should have gone from one end of the bread to the other end of the bread. So why am I telling you this? I'm giving you a visual there, but I'm telling you that to tell you this. Whenever you're making a sandwich, you have those two pieces of bread. Whatever you're spreading on your bread, it should go from one end to the other. Whatever is on that sandwich the person that's receiving the sandwich and eating the sandwich, they should be able to taste every ingredient that's on the sandwich. So if you know you're uh, making a bologna sandwich or a ham sandwich and you have a round piece, you might want to take two pieces so you can put one at the top and one at the bottom. Yeah, it's going to be a little more meat in the middle, but at least you're following proper protocol and you're making sure that Whatever is on that sandwich, whoever's eating that sandwich, they're going to taste everything in every bite. It's all about spreading and taking it from one end to the other. So the other thing I want to go back to our um, our table linens. Like I said, it's good to have pressed table linens, but also when you're decorating and you have your tablecloths on the table and you're doing your walkthrough, making sure that the tablecloths are hitting right where they need to hit before you put your centerpieces on there. Because you know if you um, if the tablecloth is crooked before you put the centerpiece on there and you try to adjust it then, it's going to cause your centerpiece to be lopsided. So you always, when you're laying linens, you always want to make sure that the linens are falling right where they need to fall. But then when you actually go around in your chair, the chairs that you have that's pushed up to the table, you never want to push the chair all the way into the tablecloth. My mentor taught me that 
oh my goodness, uh, probably about seven years, maybe even eight years ago, seven, eight, somewhere around there. But the tablecloth is, the chairs are never supposed to push into the tablecloth. The chair is only supposed to brush against the tablecloth. It's barely touching it. Because if you think about it now, if you're at home, when you get off this call, go put it through the test. If you have a tablecloth on your table, push the chair all the way in and watch how that tablecloth look as opposed to the chair just touching the tablecloth. So those are your tips for today. If you are a chef, if you're a cook, make sure that you keep your chef jacket clean, keep your apron clean, and if you have a tough time doing that, have your extra one on hand so you can always be cons- putting out the same thing, the, putting out a good presentation for your clients to see, for your workers to follow, because the body follows the head. So if you are the leader of this pack and you're running around with a dirty apron on or a dirty um, chef jacket, then your workers are going to think it's okay to do that. And in my book, this is just how we do it where the heart is. I don't think it's okay. So thank you for tuning in to Chef Tip Tuesday, and I will see you all next Tuesday.